My name is Kobus Breitzenbach, president of 33 North Homes here in Atlanta Market. Uh, today I'm going to be answering the most frequently asked questions we get in regards to whole house renovations and additions. What does the average addition cost in the Atlanta market? There's a lot of variables with this. So one of the things to kind of think about, if your current house has, for example, vinyl siding, or your house has brick, and you want to keep the facade the same, you know, those are two very big variables right there. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now, realistically speaking, if you're going to be doing an addition of any sort, anywhere between about 285 to about 385 a square foot will give you a good budgetary number. And all of that's not necessarily going to be going towards the addition. A lot of times when people call us about addition portions, they go, oh, we want to add a thousand square foot. You know, we think it's going to cost X amount of money. But what they don't, what they forget to realize is additions create a domino effect. We might be building an addition over here, but we're still going to update a lot of the stuff from the existing house because we have to bring it up to today's standards. It, it, that's just something to keep in mind. But like I said, about 285 to 385 a square foot is a good budgetary number to kind of you know, make sure that you're in a safe range. Standard additions, you can expect construction time anywhere between nine to 12 months from when the time of project, the project starts. Now, if you're just adding a small bathroom off an existing bedroom, of course, that time frame is going to be shorter. You might be looking at three to four months on that. But if you're doing a larger addition where it's you know, one or two bathrooms, one or two bedrooms, that sort of thing, anywhere between nine to 12 months is a good time from, from the date that construction actually starts. Can you live in your house during a home renovation? You can, um, just know that it's gonna be inconvenient. It is not, especially when you start doing these full house renovations, there's gonna be times where you're not gonna have power, you're not gonna have water. So short answer is yes, you can, but if at all possible, it's better to just find temporary housing somewhere else during that time. How do you get a permit for home addition? So in the Atlanta market, in order to do an addition, you need to have a site survey, you need to have full architectural drawings with engineering, and then the permitting side as a homeowner, you can either pull the permit yourself through homeowner exemption, or if you come to somebody like 33 North, we will actually handle all of that for you. So, so we'll totally make a turnkey, you know, you just, you just can do the fun stuff of picking out your finish and so forth, and we'll do all the backend stuff on your behalf. What's the difference between a design, build contract, and an architect? So short answer is most architects do not perform any of the work. You, you go to them, you say, this is what I want, they give you a price, they draw, you know, for what their drawing's gonna cost, they draw it up for you, they design it, and they give you the plans, and then you've gotta go out and actually go find a contractor to do the work. Where design build kind of incorporates both of those things where, you know, we do the full architectural drawings, and then we also complete the construction of it. So what that allows us to do is we, we have a much better control of overall costs, uh, material selections, and so forth. One of the things that we found, especially with people that buy new, or not buy new construction houses, but people that want to build a house, if they go straight to an architect, we've had clients call and say, we've bought a piece of land, we have the plans, this is what we want to build. But then when you actually look at the plans, the, the budget and the actual expectation doesn't align just because somebody told them that, oh, you can build this for that. And then people buy the land, they go to architect, they invest all the money, but then they realize that, oh my gosh, we can't actually afford to build the house that we designed. Because the architect in general, he's just providing you drawings. He doesn't really care whether or not you build the house or not. That's, it's just income for them. And not that it's a bad thing. I mean, that's, you know, they do that for a living. But the design build thing is really, you can really narrow down the process and handle the overall budget expectations and stuff from the front end. So let's say you come to us and say, we want to do a second story addition and we want to blow out the back of the house and include a nice livable outdoor space. If you've got an architect, he's going to go, great, that's awesome. This is how much it's going to cost you, let's design it. With design build, we, we kind of work it from the top down and go, okay, this is the investment that you're looking at. Does that work for you? If you go, yes, that's kind of what we had in mind, then we start the design process. And during that design process, we'll actually help you select finishes that fits within that budget as opposed to just going, oh, I want that and this and this, and before you know it, the budget just explodes because you, know, you, you weren't sure what it was gonna cost. So the design build just gives you better overall experience, better budget control, and it, you know, it makes it easier for the contractor because we've been with you every step of the way from the get-go. So there's areas in Atlanta where the houses trade very high on a per square foot basis, and there's areas where they actually do not. For example, there's certain areas in the some greater greater Atlanta area where if the house was destroyed 
you would almost pay double to rebuild it, but your value would still be less. Because just because of the build cost have increased, but the area generally has not, and you, you kind of limit it by what the rest of the neighborhood is like. But yes, short answer is you absolutely, it's a fantastic investment, especially in the areas where, where you can, like let's say for example, your houses are trading at $300, $400 a square foot, and then you can go add on for three to $400 a square foot. That's almost 100% return on your money. But if you live in an area where your house is trading at 200 a square foot, and the addition is gonna cost you 350 a square foot, then, you know, your, your return on investment is a little bit less. So when, when you're in those areas, that's when you really gotta start thinking about, does it make sense to, move and buy a new house to give me the space I need? Or do you love the house you're currently in, the school district, etc., and you're expanding it, but you know you're not necessarily doing it from a, oh, I wanna recoup all my money immediately. You know it might be 15, 20 years before you recoup it, but you're, worth, you're willing to do it because it keeps you in the area that you wanna stay in. Who's responsible for designing the home renovation? With 33 North Homes, we are design build, so you will actually work with our designer and she will help you pick finishes. It's not going to be something where she tells you this is what you're getting. There'll be a lot of back and forth, probably a lot of Pinterest boards, vision pictures, those sort of things shared back and forth. And then she'll kind of get an overall feel for what your style is. And then that way when the design process starts, she'll kind of show you stuff that is already in line with kind of what you want, as opposed to just telling you, go to this towel store and pick something and let us know what it is. So she'll kind of go in there and say, Yes, five tiles that matches kind of all the pictures you sent me. Do any of these make sense or do you want to look at something else? So it's a very systematic approach to kind of take your pictures and turn it into real life for you.